Is BMI even relevant? If so, what is the ideal BMI? If you're watching this video, you probably know what BMI is and you've probably already calculated your BMI before. And maybe you're trying to figure out if BMI is actually something that is relevant and that you should listen to, or you're wondering what the ideal BMI is and whether or not you should try to get your BMI to be lower or higher and all of these things. And today I'm gonna address all of that. First of all, what is BMI? It stands for body mass index and it places individuals in different ranges going from underweight to obese with different like severity of obesity and that is depending on their height and their weight formula i'm going to put it right here it's basically your weight in kilograms divided by your height in square meters and basically if your bmi is under 18.5 then you're considered to be underweight if it's between 18.5 and 24.9 then you are of normal weight if it's between 25 and 29.9, then you are overweight. And if you are over 30, then you are considered obese. And BMI was developed by a Belgian mathematician called Lambert Adolphe Jacques Ketzli. And he developed BMI in order to assess the degree of overweight people in a population so that this could help governments know where to allocate health resources or like more health resources. What is the ideal BMI? So a question I often get is what is the ideal BMI? Which range should my BMI be in? And what guidelines say is that for most adults, a BMI within a range of 18.5 to 24.9 is the ideal BMI. That's the BMI where you will have the least amount of health risks associated. A systematic review and analysis of 230 cohort studies that showed that having a BMI over 25 was associated with an increased risk of all-cause mortality. And there's definitely a lot of literature that proves that being obese is associated with more health risks and more death risks from diseases like type 2 diabetes and like heart disease and high blood pressure and certain types of cancers. So there's no denying that there's a correlation between one's BMI and their health status when you look at it on a general scale, on a global scale for like the general population. But there are so many other things to take into account. And now, why BMI is flawed and why you shouldn't rely on BMI. First of all, there are historical issues when it comes to BMI. So like I said before, it was developed by a mathematician, not a doctor. Yes, not a doctor. Again, his goal with this was just to assess the amount of like overweight people in global population in order to know like where government should prioritize their um, funding for like health. Well, he did this while having like the average man in mind and the average man is helpful to get statistics and data on a general population. Yes, but not to measure specific individuals health status. Apparently he even stated that BMI was not to be used as a tool to measure individual body fat or health, but it was just supposed to be a way to assess like the general population and to get statistics on the population. Also his formula was based on the data from white western Europeans and mainly men. So, you know, not ideal when you're like an African black woman. And studies have actually shown that BMI overestimates obesity in African American women. And I guess that's what happens when you use a tool that is obsolete and used to measure general populations and like not adapted to specific individuals, but more on that later. There's also a bunch of biological issues when it comes to BMI. So one of the main issues with BMI is that it's, it does not make the distinction between body fat and muscle mass. And as all of you probably know, muscle weighs more than fat. And this is where athletes can have a BMI that is totally not appropriate to their health status. For instance, Muhammad Ali had a nearly obese BMI of over 29. 
Shaquille O'Neal is obese, technically, uh, with a BMI of over 31. Tom Brady is overweight with a BMI of over 27. And Joan or Joni Lore, who is more known under the name of China, had a BMI of over 28, so almost obese. And we have that example, but this could also be the opposite situation for people who have a very, very high fat mass and then a very, very low muscle mass, who when you look at them, they don't seem like overweight at all. If you look at their BMI, their BMI is not overweight, but actually they have way more health risks. And that can be the case for elderly people, for instance, because as you age, your muscle mass decreases and your fat mass increases. And they also have some bone mass loss, so they can end up having a normal BMI, but actually their visceral, like abdominal fat status puts them at risk to have certain health issues. And while we're on the subject of abdominal fat, BMI doesn't also take into account your fat distribution. So if you store your fat in your abdominal area, again, like it's more around your organs, that can be a very high risk for certain health complications. But if you store your fat in your thighs or in your butt area, then actually that can be a protective factor against certain health diseases. And again, you can have people who have like the same BMI have totally different health risks depending on where they store their fat. So if you want to measure something and get health risks, health status from that, you should be measuring central adiposity. That's going to give you a better, more reliable result. There's also some issues in the way that BMI was designed from a pure like statistical or like scientific standpoint, because if you look at people who are overweight or obese, yes, all of them will have a high BMI, but the opposite is not true. Meaning just because you have a high BMI, that doesn't mean that you are actually overweight or obese. And that can be very detrimental when you see that you have a high BMI and you can start thinking that you're overweight or obese. It can cause some stigmatization. It can cause some eating behaviors or like health patterns that aren't appropriate. So it can just cause a lot of issues just based on the way that BMI was designed, again, because it was not intended for this at all. Also, the fact that your entire health category can change if you gain like one kilogram is just ridiculous. Like you can literally go from being 24.9, so normal BMI, no health issues, no problem, and then you gain one kilogram and then you're like over 25 and bam, overweight more prone to health issues. Weight stigma issues are also very important to take into account. Even if studies show that there is a link between being overweight and obese and health complications, which obviously I'm not going to deny, it's also very important to take into account that weight stigma can actually play a role in that. There's lots of weight discrimination in healthcare that can drive people who are overweight or obese to actually delay going to the doctor, delay getting results or tested or anything like that because they are feared of being shamed for being overweight. And then when they do finally like muster up the courage to go get a doctor's visit, then the results that they may get, the diagnoses may be completely inaccurate because the doctor will just put everything on their weight and just be like, oh, it's all because of you being overweight. And so then by the time they get an actual diagnosis on what they have, then it's more likely to be more advanced than say from a thin person who would just go to the doctors, get um, a checkup, and then it's be like, okay, that's what you have. With a fat person, it's like, okay, lose weight, probably it's the weight, the weight is the problem, then come back. And then when you do come back, like multiple years later, oh, well, too bad. The medical thing condition you have is more advanced. There are also a bunch of representation issues when it comes to BMI, just because BMI doesn't accurately represent a lot of the population. First off, men and women have varying body compositions in terms of fat distribution and like fat quantity and BMI does not account for that. Then we also have elderly people. Like I mentioned previously, as you age, your body mass, your muscle mass decreases and your body fat increases. So again, BMIs don't really mean that much for them. And a very, very big issue for non-white people, BMI is really, really off because again, it was based on white Western Europeans. So like I mentioned previously, there was a study that showed that BMI overestimated obesity in African Americans and also that black people may be misclassified as 
overweight or even obese just because they have a high muscle mass but they have like a low fat mass but that causes higher BMIs. And so it's very probable that the chronic disease risk that we link to BMI has like a much higher cutoff for black people than for white people. And the opposite can also be true because studies show that for Asian people or people of Asian descent, their BMI cutoff point at which they have more like an increased risk of chronic disease is lower than white people. So there are certain guidelines to kind of factor that in, in which for Asian people overweight begins at 23, like a BMI of 23, that's the cutoff for overweight instead of 25, and then at 25 is their cutoff for being obese. Again, for white people, 25 is the cutoff for being overweight. And so as you can see, we're kind of trying to adapt BMI to make it fit within different populations, but we're not really doing that correctly. We're just kind of arbitrarily putting numbers up and down based on certain studies and it doesn't really mean much when not all of the population can be represented. And finally, BMI doesn't consider a ton of other health issues that can also be linked to your weight like your blood pressure, blood sugar levels, cholesterol levels, heart health, inflammation levels, etc. And then it just classifies people into weight groups with no context on their age or their sex or their genetics and like family history, their lifestyle, medical conditions, all of that. Now you may be wondering how I, as a nutritionist, view BMI, how I use that BMI info. Well, the short answer is I don't find it relevant, I don't really care about it, I don't take it into account. And why is that? Well, first of all, unless your BMI is under 18, so like severely underweight or over 35, so severely obese, I don't think it's relevant, like at all. And even if, say, you are over 35 and you come to me, I'm not going to be worried about your BMI because you are already doing the right thing by coming to see a nutritionist and trying to get help. You know, you already realize probably that you are overweight and you realize that you want to get better healthy eating habits and that you want to build a healthier relationship with food and that you would like to lower your BMI. These are things that you know at least that's what i the way i see it so i see no reason in stressing people over their bmi when they're already aware of it and they're coming to see me it's because they want to get it to be lower in most cases i think that ultimately stressing too much about bmi can have a counterproductive effect because it can get people to want to lose weight at like any cost and start crash dieting and we all know that crash diets don't work and end up with your weight like yo-yoing which is even worse in the long term you may gain even more weight from that and so there's just like a bunch of issues that can arise from that so in short, if you've been stressing about your BMI, hopefully this video can reassure you. This doesn't mean that I don't absolutely encourage you to turn to healthier eating patterns, healthier eating habits, eating more whole foods, consuming less processed foods, and making sure that you take care of your relationship with food, that you drink enough water, and that you exercise regularly, sleep well. All of these things anybody should be doing regardless of their BMI. So I would really say that focusing on all of these things is much more productive than focusing on your BMI and trying to lower that number at all costs. That's it for this video and before I end it I again want to emphasize that I'm not implying that being overweight or obese doesn't have health issues. Yes absolutely the studies are clear on that but I am implying that BMI is kind of an obsolete measuring tool and also that even if people have high BMIs, shaming them and guilting them into losing weight, making them crash diet to lose the weight is not the answer at all. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like it and subscribe and see you on my next one. Bye!